hello gosh hello lovely people i'm mark j aquaviva and this is your yoga solutions live on this chilly december morning december the 17th 2019 i hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are and um yes this is me uh trying out a lone camera and it looks rather good i think um so that was very <laughs> Yeah, it's very nice. I get to try these things out beforehand. And um, yes, and uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, last time I looked, um, the fund was at 66%. So I might be, uh, I, I will be able to buy this camera. So fantastic. Thank you so much. And um, yes, and uh, the the, uh, the computer I'm, I'm using at in this moment is courtesy of Tuesday McNeil thank you very very much indeed Tuesday um, yes yeah, so ah oh, back on track it feels like and my um, yes I've got my uh, online course my next one uh, starting well the, the introductory workshop starting this this uh, this Thursday for anyone that's interested I'll, I'll talk about more of that later um, in the meantime, let's see if I have any questions. I'm not sure I do today. Let me just check. Oh, hang on. We have a comment from, let's see, uh, two comments. Let's see. Uh, morning, Mark. He, he, okay, he would like something for the lower, middle, and upper back. Well, <laughs> the spine. Okay, DB. Yeah, uh, something for the spine. Okay, that's, that's um, fair enough. Uh, I, I don't know, um, it's sort of comical really in terms of um, whenever I do my workshops and uh, I always like to be, in, uh, you know, I always start the workshops trying to get people interested in, in what they would like to resolve because I, I think that's what yoga is for. Uh, and um, you know, I go around the room and one person will say, well, I'm, I'm okay really. But um, yeah, it's okay, a bit stiff here and there, but it's okay. And then someone else will say shoulders, and the first person will go, actually, yeah, shoulders. <laughs> and then the third person will go, I, I could do something around the hips, I feel a bit stiff in my hips. And then and the first two people go, yeah, actually. So in the end, uh, and um, yes, and someone will say my spine, lower back, upper back, or they'll, they'll say their back, and I say what part. And uh, turns out, it's always the whole body for everyone uh, and it's just where our attention is being drawn at the time and of course our attention is drawn by um, where there is where we notice complication you know where, where we notice restriction where we notice um sorry i need to turn the sound off on this uh but yeah where we where we notice uh, aches and pains and that sort of thing uh, that's that's tends to be how we monitor what's going on in the body is where it's complaining uh which by itself uh, gives us a kind of strange relationship to what's going on uh yeah because uh yes if, if the time that we, if what we are noticing is the difficulty and it, this is often how we practice our yoga is we 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 notice a restriction say in the hamstrings um and then we try and stretch it um it's a bit of a, um, a an odd thing to do because it's kind of the wrong way round. Um, the 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 reason, for example, that a hamstring might be tight is because the whole body is uh, holding itself in a way that relies on the hamstring holding it, <laughs> carrying its weight, or um, you know, get, offering support. And then, in this sort of cross-eyed way of looking at the body. Uh, we will then go and attack that support, feeling like it's a restriction because we want something else to happen. It's it, it's odd, um, yeah. This this sort of approach to body work that um, well, it's a little bit cross-eyed, and uh, that's the basis of the entirety of my work is is uh, how to how to be able to uh, be with the body directly, as in with direct sensory impressions. So that we can, um, rather than the interpreted sense of what's going on, we can be with 
the, the, the direct feedback mechanism between us and our environment so that we can get an idea of what we're actually doing and uh, within that you get you get solutions uh, at the hamstrings for example if you stop relying on the hamstrings for your support as in you, you stop hanging off them they will elongate quite naturally and so leg extensions and that sort of thing don't become a problem um, lower back if uh, if your lower back is holding you up then at some point it will get tired of that and so not holding yourself up there will be the beginning of the solution but then if you hang off it it will get tired like that so um, in, instead of finding a relationship for, uh, between the spine and your touch as in um, your spine wants to feel supported by your touch and by your relationship to space if you can take your attention in those directions then you're moving towards a solution because the reason the spine is holding you up or the reason you're hanging off your spine is because you're not supported and the bottom line is the way that we are supported is not by it's not by um, external things happening to us and it's not by us doing things to the body um, well it can be that's the problem you know the, the holding yourself up with your spine is one thing you're doing uh, to your body as in um, yeah <laughs> uh, yes I want to stay uh, simple with this um, the idea to hold yourself up is something you might feel you need to do because if you when you stop doing it you feel like you fall down that's the binary nature of uh, doing things to the body um, and, and we can get strong at whatever we do but if it kind of depends what your intent is and, and what you think support means so if if what your intention is is um, becomes if, if your intention is to be supported what does that feel like you know? it, it's when you don't have to work um, you don't have to carry your own weight now the confusing thing is that that requires that we engage <laughs> but we engage with our support or you engage with your touch in order to be supported through your bones and you engage with your space so that you're not holding yourself um, away from the ability to to breathe what you are doing to be breathed because in the end it's the breath that is meant to support us so that we're not in the business of holding ourselves up um, I hope that made some sort of sense um, let's get into practice uh, so I can explain what I'm talking about a bit more um, let, let, let's try all fours because uh, you know, normally if I was in a class or something I'd get people to lie down so they could relax uh, because the the bottom line is if 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 uh, you know uh, relaxing is what we're looking for but um, if you're lying down you might not be looking for how you're supported by space so so if we come on to all fours and what I'd like you to do is to completely relax but remain supported in all fours so you'll find you have to use your hands more um, and if you could completely relax uh, you, some people will go into different patterns um, personally I tend to start to respond with my hands and I kind of sag the body through and it's actually quite pleasant it's quite quite a nice feeling uh, for me and uh, so other people if I say relax we would, would do something like this and they would be surreptitiously holding the pelvis down uh, I suppose this is collapsing my weight towards the ground so I feel a little bit heavy with that release which is why what you uh, which is why uh, when you get people to um, relax you you kind of see them do something like this where, where actually the spine is 
is lifting up, the spine is rearing up away from the ground to give a sense of distance and space. And um, that's not what I mean. What I want you to do is relax. Okay, so we, we start with an, an honest sense of not doing anything to hold ourselves away from the ground. And then um, we can play with, oops, sorry, is that working still? Yeah. Then we can begin to play with our touch and our space, our relationships, our physical relationships to them. So if instead of having your weight on your knees, for example, you were to actively touch with your knees, as in um, if there was a cushion there or something, that you could use that you want to you wanted to squish yeah, so the act of supporting yourself then you start to get a relationship to contact that is um, that you are involved in and and when you get involved with your own support then you start to have a breathing relationship uh, the same is true for the for the touch of the hands if you lean your weight against your wrists then your hands, they'll be making contact, but they won't be doing anything to relate to that contact. So they will be a, a sort of putting your weight on your wrists rather than touching with your hands. So if you get involved with touch, and this is my sort of haptic intelligence series, online series, if you get involved with touch, then the body starts to have responses that is not necessarily pushing the ground away. You know, um, that can be your intent. But if your intent is to feel supported by your touch, then there's the act of touching, pressing down through the knees, the pressing down through the tips of the big toes, the pressing down through the sort of inner touch of the hands. And the result of that, if you remain relaxed in space, the result of that will be support. As in, the front of you will start to be supported away from the ground, away from your touch. Now, you, you could uh, make it an easier job for your touch by lifting with the spine, but that is tension. That's what I would call tension, a holding pattern. What we need to do is we need to feel supported by our touch. And when you start to get this responsiveness to touch in the front of you, then, well, then you're starting to be supported by your touch. And then you can take a breath. And, um, now, if you're supported at the front of you, the breath won't be something that sort of falls into the front of you. It won't be this collapse that would normally occur. Because um, usually, when we when we um, uh, if we're not supported and you and you breathe um, and you're engaging with physical effort, then usually you will have to lift to breathe in some fashion. Yeah, and uh, and most of yoga is taught in that way. Um, but if you are supported by your touch, you won't need to lift. And instead of the front of you filling whilst the back of you holds you up, which is what happens when you lift, the back of you will breathe because the front of you is supported. So it will feel like as you breathe, It'll feel like the breath is something that is happening in the spaces behind you. As if, because you're supported in the front of you, you'll get a sense of the breath behind the head and neck. Because you're supported in the front of you, across the chest, you'll get a sense of the breath behind the wings and between the shoulder blades at the back. Because you are supported in the front of you by the touch of the knees and the hands, you'll get a sense of the breath behind the lower back, behind the base of the spine, behind the tail even if the big toes are going down. So that, and, and this is a sign that you are not holding yourself up with your back, which is essentially the, the question that um, DB was asking about, how to release the spine. So if you're supported by your touch, you can breathe into the space behind you as if it is a surface of support, as if you could, the breath meeting that support is enough for you to feel um, attached to that space. 
Now, reaching up for it will push it away. It's like you're lifting past the place of support because you are literally lifting away from the potential to support yourself with your hands, your knees, and your feet. So instead, you stay with your touch of the earth, but from that touch, you meet the space behind you as you breathe. So there are two conditions going on at the moment. The support that's happening from the hands and the space that that gives you behind you to breathe, to receive the breath. They can coexist. They rely on each other. And you can, you can sort of involve yourself with either or, as in you involve yourself with your touch to feel supported, and you'll feel that a little more with the release of the breath. So you'll get core responses along the front of the body as you release the breath, and you can take that into dog pose if you like. With the arrival of the breath, you'll feel a, a sort of a lightness. If you're, if you're, um, sorry, just uh, fixing my microphone. If you're the same thing, if you, if you can in, sort of engage with the space behind you, not lift into it, but meet it to breathe. It's the sort of thing you'd do if you were kind of nuzzling into your bed, or uh, it's a celebratory action. And uh, normally I'd get people to experience this lying down by pressing to the ground a little. But if you can meet the space behind you from your touch to breathe, oops, and I'm talking about behind the head, behind the neck, behind, um, sort of inside the wings behind you, behind the kidneys, behind the back of the waist, behind the base of the spine and the tail. If you can meet those spaces as you breathe, then that by itself is a form of support. It's a way of feeling supported. Obviously, it comes from your touch, but as you release the breath, you can stay meeting that space. Instead of collapsing down, you stay meeting the space behind you. And what you'll find is the front of you will empty away from the ground more efficiently because of it. Now, that's the front and back of you. There's a, there's a, there are some sort of key places along the spine that get a chance to rest forwards within that action. So if we set it up again, there's a touch of the hand supporting the front of you, head, throat, chest. And there's a touch of the knees supporting the front of you, uh, solar plexus, belly, upper, lower big toes, lower belly particularly, tail. They're supporting the front of you away from the ground. There's the space behind you which is met with the arrival of the breath. And that's that requires your intention to meet that space as much as um, the touch of the ground requires your intention to support yourself. And if you meet the space behind you as you breathe, as you release the breath, and continue to meet the space behind you, there is still part a part of the spine that drops. And that part is the spine behind the heart. The back of the neck, between the, back, the heart and the uh, head, that space is supported. Between the heart and the tail, that space is supported. But right in the center of that, there's the potential to drop, with the release of the breath, the spine behind the heart. And, and what it drops into is support. So you arrive on your hands, you arrive on your knees and then on your feet as you change to dog pose. And it's from the spine behind the heart dropping through to the support that it meets at the front. And that heart-centered release with the release of the breath teaches us how to extend the spine, elongate the spine, from the very center of your being. With the whole of the front of you releasing away from the ground as you let go of the breath, because you are supported, and the whole of the back of you remaining uh, available to the breath and the space behind you as you breathe. Between those things, within the rhythms of the breathing, you get a sort of rhythmic release towards the heart as the breath lets as you let go of the breath 
and as you release towards the heart, then it's through the lungs, you see, deflating towards the heart through the lungs. Then the spine behind the heart gets to settle towards the hands and towards the feet. Sorry, I went off camera there a bit. So, um, yeah, uh, let's zoom out a little. So I hope that feels nice. <laughs> um, another thing you can do is um, when we've got that sort of feeling of movement, um, all of our movements can kind of center in that release. It's it's taking the responsibility uh, away from the limbs doing the lifting and the dropping, the the spine doing the lifting and the dropping. We we stop being bodies that we are carrying around, and we start being supported by our own touch and our own relationship to space through breathing and release. So, and the result of that is a centering in the center of the lungs, particularly when you release the breath. And you can put your hands there, you can put one up your back, find the center of the spine, the rounded part, and you can, or down your back if you, if you prefer. That'll make it, if you're someone with neck issues, it's kind of better to feel how the, um, the thoracic spine, the rounded part of the spine can release through the body from above. If you're someone that um, hangs heavily in your groins, off your groins, then you, it might be better to get a sense of how the spine releases um, up from below. But um, whichever way, find, find a connection to the center of the thoracic spine. And if above and below it, are available to the breath. You might notice how as the breath releases away from the head, away from the throat and the chest, and as the breath releases away from the head at the top, between the shoulders, as, the, as you come together, as you deflate um, towards the heart through the lungs and towards the heart from the front of the spine and the back of the spine, sorry, the, the chest and the, and the spine. There's a rhythmic coming together in this place. And when that rhythmic coming together, which follows the release of the breath, sort of has purchase through your base, It's a release of tension via the rib cage through the base, the sit bones, the feet, whatever's on the ground. And you kind of want it to be about equal for it to be useful. So, you know, if you're too much on your sit bones, then you'll have a confused experience because you're trying to balance on one part of your base. So, if you give some weight to the fronts of the feet as well as the sit bones, and you intend to use the purchase of the ground, then from the heart you get to pivot into space. And you can sort of leave your base behind. It's not like you're, it's, it's not the same as pulling yourself around with your groins or pulling yourself around with your shoulders and head. There's a centering movement from the spine behind the heart. And that movement um, is kind of instead of pulling on the spine. It's actually exa exactly the opposite. It's the spine uh, releasing to the ground and from its purchase with the ground, turning you and getting you to move in space, breath by breath. So we, we sort of reverse paradigms a little. 
instead of um, doing stuff to the body, you become the spine, you become the center of the body, that is who you are, and from the center of your being, you relate to earth and space as one. And it's through the rhythms of breathing. So there needs to be a, an honoring of those rhythms. You relax, you breathe. And when you release the breath from the heart, into the heart, you accompany that movement. Let's try the other side. Um, I only swap legs just for variation. So the breath is something that arrives above and below. The touch can help. So uh, we can always set, set these things up. Um, first of all, there's touch to support the front of you. Then there's the space behind and either side of you as you breathe. And if you stay with those things as you release the breath, then you, you're setting it up so that the spine behind the heart can move towards the center of things as you let go of the breath. And when that happens, then you're in a different mode in, in your yoga. For me, that's when the yoga begins, you see. And it's a, it's a rhythmic practice of letting go of the breath, allowing the spine to connect to the earth, spine behind the heart, to connect to the earth from there with that release. And for you to f follow the wave, the, the flow, the pulse, that is the spine behind the heart expressing from its contact with the earth, from its relationship to the earth, to space. Breath by breath. And when, when we awaken that part of the spine, um, many of our um, postural issues kind of fade into insignificance um, because most of the postural, postural issues are source in us doing things to our bodies to our spines okay <laughs> I hope that's useful um, yes I hope you find it that useful and uh, yes, what, what have I got going on? Well, uh, not much more this year apart from my online course, uh, Proprioceptive Intelligence. It's the follow-on from the Haptic Intelligence course, although it, it can be, you can do it, um, you can join it by itself. Uh, in the same way, if you, if you involve yourself with the contact with the earth uh, um, and get precise about how patterns of support and movement go with that, um, there's no way that you can do that without it influencing where you are in space. And similarly, if you're involved in um, your physical relationship to space, not where you imagine things to be, but how you engage, that's what, what it's always about. It's always about your direct physical engagements with things. It gives you the direct experience of who you are and the rest of it. If you can engage with space, then you could just try it right now. You know, just um, uh, if you lightly put the hands on the back of the head, and uh, try not to be pulling the head forwards. That's not very nice. Uh, so the head leans back into the hands to help support um, the hands in space, the elbows in space, and the hands just rest into the head um, to give the head something to lean into. And then if you if you breathe that relationship you'll feel the breath is quite expansive. If you stay with that physical relationship as you release the breath, you should find some of what we were doing. Um, the, the centering, the, the centering in the core, the openness of the heart. Now, it might feel like you need your hands on your head to do this, but what it is, what is going on, is a relationship to the space behind your head that you're happen, happening to put your hands there for. So if you could just imagine that contact and even engage with your arms as if it's still there, you will have a similar style feeling of the, in the breath. 
but um, you need to stay on task as in rather than doing things to your body instead of holding those tensions you need to be in relationship to the space behind your head as you breathe and if you stay with that relationship as you release the breath as in imagine supporting yourself there then these things happen the core responds the heart comes through so there's a, a tiny, a mini example. You, you have a, the way we feel in our bodies is entirely determined by our relationships to support and our relationships to the space that we occupy. And these relationships are real and physical and they give us a direct feedback in, through our sensory systems, through our nervous systems and give us clues as to how we feel. It, and uh, the clever thing that we can do with um, with our yoga is we can become objectively present to our, our direct engagement with um, the environment. And when, when you do that through a full cycle of the breath, the, uh, the outcome is inevitably something closer to the yoga. Because it brings us back to the centre of ourselves from a, uh, an intelligent frame of reference. And that's what the proprioceptive course is going to be focusing on. Our relationships to space and how we engage with those things. And, uh, and the outcomes, the natural patterns. And this is what I did with haptic intelligence. I took you through different types of uh, kinds of touch, um, different directions of touch, different kinds of involvement and intention behind touch, and the outcomes in every part of the body. And we're, we will be looking at the same sort of thing with the um, proprioceptive intelligence course, but in relationship to space. And uh, there's an intro workshop this Thursday, uh, live, online, and it's uh, I think you can join for £25. And if you join, if you sign up for that and decide to do the full course, which starts in January, then you'll get your £25 refunded off the cost of the course. Um, the course itself is six weeks and it comes with three one-to-ones with me directly online or in person if you can make it to Hove. If not, online is, is fine. And it's, um, it's about supporting you in your process because it's um, this stuff is radical and it's um, really quite... Uh, transformative and uh, the thing that gets confused is is comparison to what is normal you see um, things change and so things feel unfamiliar so we become unsure so uh, the one-to-ones as well as the live attendance um, if you're on screen with me on the course then um, I can help you as you go but obviously one-to-one -one you get a lot more attention and a lot more precision and more sort of bespoke guidance so I've included three half hour one-to-ones over the six weeks um, that we do the course together. It's on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. The intro will be the same this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, on a Zoom link and you, you'll get all that information when you sign up. Um, and uh, But uh, yeah, there's obviously on the, on, the, on the full course, there's a limited number of uh, participants on the live course, but uh, there is the option to join it uh, recordings only. Um, uh, you can't do that for the intro. You just have to sign up if you if you want to take part, and uh, you can be there live or watch the recordings. It makes no difference, and it, and it's cheap as a result. <laughs> um, but um, the course itself will be a limited number of people um, for the live places, and then there will be um, a certain number that can join up. Um, for the recordings only, as in you watch the recordings. It's not the recordings only, you, you still get your one-to-ones. You, you watch and follow the recordings um, as if doing a live course, and then you book in your one-to-ones with me anyway, and it's cheaper, of course, uh, because there's a slightly less direct interaction. Some people that would suit better. If you're, if you're busy on a Thursday evening, then that might suit you more. And... Um, Yes, uh, and uh, some people prefer getting on with these things in their own time, as long as you make some sort of uh, discipline out of it, so you, you're following following it as an intensive course, it, it makes a difference. Uh, doing, doing it every week and sticking to it uh, makes a big difference to life, generally. <laughs> okay. Um,
yes, that that's uh, that's what I got. Doing. That's all I got going on this year. That's the, uh, the the intro to that workshop. I might do a second intro next year, uh, before the course starts. I'll see how it goes, and see if there's any places left anyway. So I, I won't need. I won't. I won't do that if it's completely full. Um, uh, yes, but some people have booked. There's a few places. Quite a few places have gone already for the live places. So if you're interested, you need to book in book for that soon. Um, and other than that, in January, uh, I've got my weekends with the lovely Pete Blackaby, uh, one down south in Brighton. No, the first one is in Glasgow, 4th and 5th, and the second one is the weekend after in Brighton at Unit 4. Um, and there's still a few places, not many. Um, it's uh, very very subscribed. People, people love these weekends. It's an interesting weekend where... You get to look at the fundamental principles of yoga as, as uh, both myself and Pete Blackaby see it. Um, and you see how we apply ourselves to it in, in teaching and practice in, in really quite different ways. And it's, it's like looking at, we're looking at the same um, subject from different angles. So you get it nicely fleshed out between us. And uh, I remember one, one um, person described uh, attending this weekend, there's a bit like booking a gig with uh, with the small faces and the kinks on the same bill. <laughs> I thought that's hilarious, and uh, yeah, uh, I presume I'm the kinks. I don't know, but anyway, um, yes. So that that'll do. That, that's all from me. Uh, lots of love to you all. Uh, I'm and I. I think next week is Christmas Eve, so I think I won't be doing my yoga solutions live next week. Um, the following week will be New Year's Eve or day. I'm not sure. Uh, if it's New Year's Day, I may do it. Let's see. Let's just have a little quick look on the calendar. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's uh, it's it's Christmas Eve next Tuesday, so I won't be doing it then. And then it's yeah, it's New Year's Eve, so I think we'll we'll give that a miss, and I shall see you for the next one on um, January, Tuesday the 7th, and yes, okay, we'll see, I, I might, I might fit in, I might fit in one in that week before, because um feels like, two weeks off feels like a long time, now I've got things uh, up and running again, we, uh, we borrowed stuff, but um, um I, I feel like I want to sort of keep going with the th thing as a thank you to everyone, so we'll see. But anyway, uh, I'll definitely have Christmas Eve off. So I'll see you uh, same time, same place, pretty soon. Lots of love to you all. Bye now.